What is going on everybody? Weedles from Needle here and we are backing in with an Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon Wi-Fi battle and this one's going to be a rarely used tier battle against Ibanez. So today my voice may sound a little bit different because I am a little sick. Uh, uh, I'm sick. Boo, you whore. I apologize for that, so hopefully it's not too big of a deal. Um, the team I'm using today, I kind of threw together because I did not have a really used two team ready. My opponent's team, though, is looking very scary. He has Needle Queen, a Scavalier, Mega Blast, Toys Type Rancher, and Shaman, which I consider top tier threats. And then a Sneasel, so it's one of those cases where your opponent's are like, I have a fun team, want to face me in my fun team? Oh, hey! And then it's literally five top tier threats and then one fun Pokemon being Sneasel, which isn't really that half bad and rarely used anyway. So my opponent's team is pretty damn threatening and let's just hop right into this battle against Ibanez because this battle is pretty damn close. And I recommend you guys watch it till the end because this battle is very, very enjoyable. So I did off with my six foot hex. Hey, I wrote and cut as my opponent makes a very smart lead leading off a Needle Queen though it wasn't really all that intelligent. It was just like, hey, he might lead Rotom so I'll lead off a Needle Queen, get Stealth Rocks up and go from there. So good lead to my opponent's fire. I kind of turned my brain off and let up with Rotom like most Rotom players. I'm gonna switch to my Scavalier as my opponent predicts that very nicely goes for Earth Power. And that was actually a pretty nice. play because I have no ground resistance besides Rotom itself. And Rotom doesn't want to stay in against a Needle Queen. So good play to my opponent's part. He's able to 3 a KO me with Earth Powers. I'm just, just gonna go for a knockoff here to remove the Life Orb. As uh, now Need a Queen's damage potential is lowered by a decent amount, but Thunderbolt's still gonna be able to knock out my Scavalier. And down goes my Assault Vest to Scavalier. And then I realized after this thing fainted, I'm like, wait a minute. Now I just lose to Shaman, so oof, not good for me, but now I'm going to bring in my Cancer Fairy, my Milotic, and this Cancer Fairy set is really, really, really bad because I'm not going to use a fat-ass gay Milotic set. Mm -mm. This Milotic is pretty fat, but it's not that threatening <laughs> unless you get let it get to plus six, then it's pretty threatening, but otherwise this Milotic set is pretty underwhelming, but it's still pretty fun to use nonetheless because it's something no one sees coming because Milotic is like, oh, it's going to Scald me, it's going to Toxic me, it's going to Dragon Tail. No. This Milotic looks that is really bad so my opponent's gonna bring in the shaman here so i just click hypnosis and thanks to coil there's no chance to miss hypnosis so i'm gonna be able to put the shaman to sleep and uh, that's pretty good for me though unfortunately shaman does have natural cure so we can just switch out and get rid of the uh, sleep status and then just come back in and seed flare me so that's still pretty bad for me because shaman still threatens me out but at the very least you're able to deal with it temporarily my opponent's gonna bring in tyrantrum here is I'm just gonna go for the coil to increase my uh, attack and defense some more so physical attackers can't really threaten me out and my opponent's forced to use shaman to break through me and I need to get rid of shaman otherwise I just lose so my opponent's gonna bring in Tyrantrum here and I'm at plus two defense with the uh, marble scale so Hathna shouldn't be doing too much damage to me as it still does so much damage considering you know, I pretty much have plus three defense but this is life orb Tyrantrum and Tyrantrum hits really damn hard so I'm able to put this thing to sleep thankfully so Tyrantrum can't really like head smash through me thankfully it gives my opponent a free switch into shaman so that's still really bad for me but at the very least we're able to put the uh, tyrantrum out of commission so that's pretty nice for me very very nice my opponent's gonna bring in the shaman here which is very very bad for me because shaman can just seed flame you to death but at the very least we're able to get the recover off so we're gonna be able to live at least one seed flare and then retaliate with my last move which some of you guys may see coming already because i have used this my little set before <laughs> My opponent's going to go for the Seed Flare, as thankfully he skillfully dodged and able to hit this thing with a Facade. And if you guys didn't know, Facade does ignore any like attack lowers from the uh, burn, so a Facade still does zero because it's not stab and I have no investment, but hey, it still does a decent amount of damage at plus two, and Seed Flare is going to be able to uh, do so much damage to me, but we're able to live because we are Milotic, and that miss definitely matter because we're able to get off some more damage with the Facade, though the Hex does come back around later on in this battle, as you'll see. So Facade's going to weaken the Shaman to the point where I did feel like I won't loose to it so that's very nice for me and thankfully my opponent doesn't reveal the rest randomly so sea flare is just gonna knock out my milotic which is fine so down goes my milotic and uh, we're able to weaken shaman so i feel like my milotic's done its job well and now i'm gonna bring in six foot hex i wrote him because it's like one of my only grass resists at this point so i bring in wrote him my opponent's gonna save the shaman for later which kind of tells me he might have recovery though i'm really hoping i don't give him the chance to recover my opponent's gonna bring in a scavalier i'm gonna volt switch here and look at this damage you can see he's definitely not a self vested because i would have done way less Less damage so i'm gonna assume this thing is choice banded or like sword stance so i'm gonna bring my diancy here and bait my opponent to go for the iron head because i feel like most of scavalers carry iron head or drill run so i'm gonna switch into my rotom yet again expecting iron head as my opponent does go for the iron head so we're able to pivot into rotom very nicely but it does so much damage because he crits me so that's some pretty unlucky hacks but at the very least we're able to go for the will o -Wisp. my opponent feels comfortable enough staying in but thankfully he uh, didn't anticipate the will o -Wisp, or just didn't care i guess so 
we're able to burn the Escavalier, and he does not switch up moves, which does tell me he's likely choice banded. And Iron Head is unable to knock me out thanks to the burn, so at the very least, the crit did not hinder me all that much. It just kind of put me in a difficult spot. We were able to play around that, get our health back with the Eye of Papa Berry, the most fun berry to say, in my personal opinion. And now the Escavalier is pretty much useless because it's burned. My opponent's going to switch out the Escavalier here, very solid play, and bring in the Needle Queen. And since I know he's locked in the Iron Head and he's choice banned, I'm going to go for the Leaf Storm here, predicting Needle Queen to come and expecting him to predict my gold switch. So, very solid play on my part. I actually made a good play in this battle, so props to me. Gonna knock out the Needle Queen with the Leaf Storm. So, down goes Needle Queen. And now my opponent's gonna bring in this Sneasel, Shiny Sneasel, which looks very fabulous, by the way. Shiny Weavile looks like it has like Kool Aid spilled on it, but Shiny Sneasel looks very fab. I have a very solid switch into Shiny Sneasel. I'm gonna bring in my Diancy here, which should be able to face Ink Icicle Crash. My opponent has Ice Punch. I'm like, oh, that's weird, but we should be able to live this. But we get frozen Bruh. by Ice Punch. So I was about to ask my opponent had Ice Punch, and then after I, I was typing it out, he froze me with Ice Punch. So I'm like, oh. That's why he has Ice Punch, and now he's going to go for a Sword Stance here, increase his attack. I'm still frozen solid, and so my counter to Sneasel, a very hard counter may I add, just kind of gets fucking destroyed by Ice Punch here. We're able to live, but we don't thaw because Freeze is a very nice hacks, and now we're going to get knocked out by the Ice Punch. So my counter to my, to my opponent Sneasel kind of gets destroyed by Ice Punch, but it's not the end of the world because now we can just bring in my Rhyperior, and thanks to Solid Rock, we should be able to live a plus two Ice Punch. And then get our weakness policy. So I'm like, oh yes. yes. Hit me with the ice punch, daddy. So he's going to hit me with ice punch. And we're going to activate our weakness policy. Are you fucking kidding me? Yeah, we activate our weakness policy, but we get frozen. <laughs> so yeah, Rhyperior gets frozen by ice punch. And now, yeah, I don't get the rock polish off. And my opponent's going to knock me out with the ice punch. So yeah, Dango's going in dry. If we did get the rock polish off, we could have potentially won if he didn't have ice shard. And later you'll see he doesn't have ice shard. So we could have potentially won there. But you know, yeah. That's life. So I bring in tap my arm black here, my hoodlum scrappy. My opponent's gonna go for the ice punch here. We're gonna be able to live this. But we get frozen by ice punch. <laughs> yeah, we don't thaw, and I'm gonna get ice punched and or low kicked rather, and he's gonna knock me out. So that kinda shows me he doesn't have ice shard because he probably has knockoff as his last move, so. Yeah, we're gonna get knocked out. My last is Rotom, and we don't outspeed the Sneasel, and Ice Punch will indeed knock me out. So, uh, yeah, that was a very uh, one-sided battle. I kind of lied at the beginning, so you guys thought it was close, but it was very one-sided, and we do get 5 would by Ibanez, but, you know, should have just played around the freezes better. I'm a really bad player. My bad's so my opponent just outskilled all over me, so my opponent still played well. Like, I'm not trying to discredit his moves, but, yeah, those triple freezes kind of made it impossible to win at that point, but hopefully you guys enjoyed this Hacks Fest battle, because it's still fun to show pretty funny battles like this and people complain that I don't post losses so here you go here's the loss here's that L hopefully you guys enjoyed this Wi-Fi battle against Ibanez if you guys enjoyed the video and really want to support my channel I would appreciate it very very much if you hit the like button or the dislike button depending on how you viewed the video it really helps on my channel a lot more than you think leaving a like on the video helps out much more than people realize and I appreciate all the people who take them out of your day so leave a like and comment on the question of the day which is going to be when was the worst time you've been hacked in a pokemon battle i know i've asked this question before but i'm asking it again okay let me know in the comments down below if you have any sort of hacks related stories you want to share to the class where the opponent hacks you or you hacks the opponent so i have a few stories to share to the class so besides this battle where i got triple frozen where this this has never happened to me before where the worst i've been frozen was frozen twice and i've been frozen twice where in a battle where i faced a rotom frost and then it froze me twice with blizzard then proceeded to hit all eight blizzards and then in black and black and white, I got frozen by Ice Fang and flinched by Ice Fang twice in a row. So my opponent went for Ice Fang, I got frozen, I thawed, then I got flinched, and then the same thing happened the next turn where I got frozen, thawed, and got flinched. And the next turn, I got flinched again, and then whatever. But th th that battle was fucking bizarre. I wish I had that on video, but I do not have that anymore, sadly. But apart from that, the worst time I hacked the opponent was uh, when I was facing a Tapu Fini, I'm pretty sure it was. And then it was trying to hit me with Hydro Pump, but it just could not hit the Hydro Pump to save its life. I think it missed six Hydro Pumps in a row before it hit. And that was just the funniest shit ever. I think I like felt bad to the point where I just like let my opponent try to Hydro Pump until he hit me. So yeah, that was my hash related stories. Let me know in the comments down below if you have any sort of hash related stories you'd like to share to the classroom. But that's going to be the question of the day. Thank you guys so much for watching till the end of the video. I'll talk to you guys next time. Wait! Three.
two, one. Ooh, Alright, we're over 10 minutes it. now. For a second, I thought I wasn't going to make any money on this video, but thankfully I caught that. I'll check you guys next time. Bye.